we are going to cover the application process for a job now a job doesn't necessarily mean that you are working in a company here in the netherlands phd and pd engineering are also considered a sort of a job like especially in the software uh, industry mm -hmm. IT industry you can easily work from home not every day though mm -hmm. but uh, yeah uh, this facility is there yeah. so uh, here is the PhD here is the job where does PD engineering come in so wh what are the best websites mm -hmm. that are there that people can go and look for PhD positions mm -hmm. I landed my first job as a Python developer through Stack Overflow. So uh, Stack Overflow jobs is also one of the best places to look for IT jobs. Yeah. Now, while mentioning the websites, uh, I mentioned something called visa sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Now that is a huge... Uh, misconception is also there. Actually. Misconception is there, but yeah, it's, a, it's a very important thing. So especially beginners, when they're applying for a entry level job, what they do is they fill up their resume with courses that they have uh, earned on udemy.com or udacity.com ah, okay. Coursera. or coursera.com they just fill up their resume with all these courses recruiters hate that like they completely hate that now let's talk about the requirement of english right netherlands is a heavily dutch spoken country however english is kind of the second language here in fact everyone Pretty much a lot of people speak English. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the basic things I would say is like, first of all, you need a good motivation letter yes. or statement of purpose. I don't know what they call in different places. So yeah. it's very short. Normally, I think they expect it to be like one. It depends. Some universities specify the limit, but normally it's one, one and a half page. It's very short. Yeah. There are basically two school of thoughts. One is the PhD programs in USA have so because USA is also another country uh, where uh, there are a lot of applications for PhD program and the second school of thought is how PhDs are uh, organized here in the Netherlands so we talked about the websites where you can find these positions we talked about visa sponsorship now let's talk about the requirement of English right Netherlands is a heavily Dutch spoken country however uh, English is kind of the second language here in fact everyone Pretty much a lot of people speak English, yeah. especially in companies and PhD, English speaking is a requirement. And by the way, recently there was a survey and they found that it is the world's highest number of non-English speaking countries speaking English. Yes, yes. It is rank one, like yeah. among the non-English speaking countries which speak English. Okay. Because most young people you'll find from their primary school they are taught both the languages like yeah. Dutch and English so I think this is a very important point because I remember when I was coming to the Netherlands this question was haunting me a lot like what do I have to learn Dutch to actually find a job there in fact I also registered in a Dutch speaking class never went there that's a separate thing but uh, this is an important question for all the new coming new upcoming students uh, who are coming to the Netherlands uh, for their studies or for or who want to apply for a job here in the Netherlands directly from their hometown you can Mo really get away with learning English most of the time mm. so if you know English well you really have a good chance of finding something here however TOEFL or ELTS these are the tests that really test your acumen in English when you're applying for masters TOEFL ELTS is required mm -hmm. but is it required of let's say someone does a master's in the uh, Netherlands then they apply no. for a PhD no is then then you don't need because yeah. the thing is like you're taught masters in English yeah. for two years so yeah. and also recently whatever I've heard from others like if you are applying directly PhD from India or any other non-European country outside of Netherlands and if your country requires you to take TOEFL then Sometimes in the application they were mentioning two three years back, but nowadays I've heard that the because it is in the right of the professor who have this position. So most of the times they are waiving off that uh, requirement if your university in their host country is in English, like the taught the course that you are taught. Suppose someone is from India and their masters they did in English, then also sometimes it is waived off, but still just look for it or if you're not sure ask them by email and then because most places they also ask so it, yeah. i'm not sure about that so better you check for yourself yeah. so explicitly look for the requirement whether TOEFL mm. is required or not and i think it is also yeah. same for pd engineering uh, yes it's same for pd engineering 
also with jobs they look for someone who speaks english fluently mm-hmm. uh, and that will be very much uh, obvious for the recruiters during the interview process mm-hmm. so they don't ask for toefl and elts score mm-hmm. it's only for phd and stuff and yesterday i was going through some phd vacancies in delft and uh, eindhoven uh the thing is uh, none of them mention toefl or elts yeah, but they do is. mention that english uh, the person should be well versed yeah, in yeah. english because the reason is like you write a lot of scientific papers yeah. so in that sense you should have a certain level of writing skill yeah. i mean obviously you develop that during your masters but still if you don't have that then it will be really difficult to Uh, continuously be writing papers and yeah. so apart from the communication the writing skill is also very necessary so that's why they expect certain level of english that's yeah. the main reason like. yeah so uh, make sure that you go through this uh, process uh, it is an important criteria if you don't fulfill it no matter wha- uh, how much you do it, it can become an issue mm. also this will really help you in writing your resume and motivation letter so uh, let's now talk about the important things that you need while applying for these positions phd pd engineering jobs so sambit wha- what are the main things that you need to apply for a phd position um, yeah so the basic things i would say is like a uh, first of all you need a good motivation letter yes. or statement of purpose i don't know what they call in different places so yeah. it's very short normally i think they expect it to be like one it depends some university specify the limit but normally it's one one and a half page it's very short yeah. so in word it would be like 300 350 words uh, yeah so yeah. it's very short like three paragraphs or something so what they want to see is like uh, actually they don't want to see a writing skill but they want to see whether you can communicate whatever you have done maybe in your master thesis or how you connect your research experience in your thesis with what you are applying for yeah. like it may be very different but whether you are able to link something or maybe whether you are able to offer them something based on the position they have advertised like yeah. okay i can be useful because of this xyz reasons very short in two three lines yeah. in one paragraph so one important thing about phd because i also applied for phd mm-hmm. positions never went for them there are basically two school of thoughts one is uh, what uh, the phd programs in usa have so because usa is also another country uh, where uh, there are a lot of applications for phd program and the second school of thought is how uh, phd's are uh, organized here in the netherlands in usa you apply to a department you apply to a school mm-hmm. so you apply for phd in school of mechanical engineering yeah, school of civil engineering there you are like a student yeah so school it's... of computer science engineering it's not really a job it's a, uh, you are basically a student so you apply there uh and then after that you uh, study you do some research and then you decide what objective what is the objective of your phd then you decide the problem statement for your phd however in the netherlands which is the second school of thought you already have a problem statement so phd positions in the netherlands are uh, advertised as with the problem statement so this is what you are exactly going to do mm. if you are in automotive sector maybe you are going to work with mechatronics or vehicle to vehicle communication so you already have a clear and concise problem statement so when you are applying to whether to the um, um, the united states or to netherlands make sure to have this distinction in mind yeah. so if you are applying in the netherlands for a phd pr- uh, uh, position what you need to have in your motivation letter i think is how your current education yeah that's what can i said help, right? yeah how uh, can you link that how can yeah. you link it to the problem statement and how is your education is going to help you mm-hmm. however uh, while applying for a phd position in america i think it's very similar to the masters the way yes, you write yes. the sop so basically that. they need to see the motivation in you in why are you interested in doing it in this particular school so what is the motivation you have uh, applying for a phd let's say in the mechanical engineering or in a computer science field what is the thing you are going to do mm-hmm. so there you are the one who will propose the problem statement and if that problem statement is interesting for the school they are going to take you in so i think that's where uh, people really need to be aware mm-hmm. of writing their motivation or statement of purpose mm-hmm. when you are applying for a job there is a different way of writing a yeah. statement of purpose cover letter right? it's no. called cover letter it's called motivation letter i mean there are a lot of names for it mm. but it's ba- it basically shows why are you applying for that job 
so the job description is there data engineer automation engineer architecture design um, you know ux designer uh, whatever position you are applying for they already have a job description so you have to show them that this is the thing that you you are going to bring to the table for them and this is the thing that you want to get out from them they basically are looking for a mutual coordination mm. like what exactly are you looking from us and mm. what exactly can you give us like what is the additional what is that one skill or what what are those skills that really differentiate you from other applicants so there you need to mention uh, your projects you need to mention uh, uh, what makes you motivated in your particular field how do you stay motivated how do you learn new things and you also have to mention your past experiences in that particular domain showing okay this is the similar kind of work that i have done and this is the kind of work that you expect and this is how i can help you there mm -hmm. when it comes to resume I uh, I'll, I'll, I think uh, I should uh, say for jobs you mm. can do that for yeah. PhD. Yeah, I mean it's almost the same, but I will yeah. just say. Like yeah, but in jobs there is a, a particular thing that I noticed here. Mm -hmm. So especially beginners, when they're applying for a entry level job, what they do is they fill up their resume with courses that they have uh, earned on Udemy.com or Udacity.com ah, okay. or Coursera.com. They just fill up their resume with all these courses. Recruiters hate that, like they completely hate that. In fact, this is the thing, uh, one of the recruiters I, I was in touch with, I'm not going to name him, he actually said that he will, every time he looks at a resume and he sees all these courses, he just rejects them. Because that shows that you, you are showing me that you have done these courses and that's why you're eligible for the job, whereas in real life scenario, it's not the case, you know. Degree is never the best uh, guarantee of quality. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's helpful that you have done this degree. It's really good. How much you have applied. Like, yeah. And here's the thing. This does not mean that you, sh you cannot use them. Mm -hmm. You have to be a little bit smart about them. So what you do is every time you do a course on Udemy, every time you do a course on Coursera, break that course into multiple projects you know so let's say they're teaching you about uh, natural language processing though whatever they're teaching change the scope a little bit after you have finished the course and do something different then upload it to github so you have a project there saying okay nlp with some data sets yeah. and then mention your github account in your resume so you are still showing them the thing that you learned with udemy just in a different way mm -hmm. so that way People really love GitHub. I think yeah. GitHub is the best place for yeah. developers. And every time, everything, like and you show them their repository, uh, you tell the recruiters about your repositories, your projects, they'll be highly excited. So try to be smart about your courses. Don't just go willy nilly putting every course you have done on the internet into your resume. It's not going to help. Be smart about it. Make those courses into projects, put them in your GitHub account, and share your GitHub account with the recruiter. Mm -hmm. Also, I think it is very important if you are a beginner it is important that you mention the courses or the skills that you have learned during your education to show them that okay these skills I have and these are the skills I want so for example if you're looking at a position that requires Python SQL knowledge of cloud so it may have a skill section mm -hmm. where you put Python SQL and what I do is I can share my resume here I actually uh, put a percentage of the knowledge I think I have so uh, my Python is 4 out of 5 my SQL is 3 out of 5 something like, like that bar chart it's like a, it's like a star chart okay, okay. I will put put mm -hmm. it here yeah, and yeah, so that's a good I mean at least it's of thing like you can yeah. assess yourself like exactly so uh, recruiter knows this is what the uh, app candidate candidate thinks about himself or herself so i think that's a very important thing and uh, this is one tip that you can really use in your resume mm -hmm. the, is it the same process for phd not really i mean the the way you make the resume same only uh, i don't know about job but i think one thing that is common is like max you have a two page cv right in yeah. europe like because in us they make they have a stand mandatory requirement to make a one page cv uh, yes, here yes. i think it's one or two it i depends. think it's one i think uh, most of the recruiters have been in okay. touch with okay they always say because uh, and this is one thing we'll discuss in the mistakes mm -hmm. which is a big part but uh, 
the average time a recruiter spends on your CV is less than 10 seconds. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, so whatever I've uh, experienced is that normally in PhD, the max limit is two. You can obviously have one. And it's like, it uh, you don't need to vary your cv based on the position you are applying for i mean the project because mostly for evaluating that part they use your motivation letter where yeah. you are connecting your previous experience with that advertisement whatever you are applying for but cv you can have a generic cv you don't need to always tailor make your cv for each uh, phd position but that generic cv also should be a bit different so in a way what i would say is like the basic things that you need is like normal like the education and uh, maybe if you have worked with some projects like maybe your thesis if you have completed it or maybe before that you have done an internship which is really related to that position like is a, suppose you are applying for NLP something project and then you have done NLP internship for six months you can mention that definitely and also try to have like the if you have any publications you have published like a short blog also yeah. which is related to the research not like some random thing then you can mention those things because they also want to see your writing skill any way you can prove your writing skill it does not mean that you have like written a book which is not at all related but yeah. something in relation to that so yeah. those things you can highlight them and apart from that i think it's almost the same like whatever you mentioned there like i think one more thing which may may not be required in jobs is letter of recommendation Mm. But letter of recommendation is definitely required in PhD and yeah, PD engineering, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know about PD engineering exactly. Yeah, it is required, I mean, it is required but I was just telling that uh, in PhD, you don't need to send a recommendation letter just like you do in US beforehand. Yeah. So you give name of two or three referees, like depending on whom you choose. And then in the last round of your interview, suppose you go to the last round, you have like three, four rounds of interview, then they contact those people maybe by phone or email and ask them. So they don't send a letter beforehand, at least in Netherlands, and then they just call them or contact them yeah. to verify your background if they want to. Yeah, so, so that's the process in PhD. So, so I think LOR is not decisive, but it is like, uh, it's very important, mm -hmm. but it's not decisive. There are no, other no, things no. they take into account. Because like resume, they ask it at the last, I think like they are sure that they will offer the position but to clear that last one person out they call that person and yeah. okay, so yeah. LOR is not the first thing that they will refer to but it is the last thing like so yeah also one more thing one small thing uh, one of my PD engineering friends mentioned mm -hmm. when you are coming to the Netherlands from your home country make sure to have your grade sheets for your bachelor school everything don't leave it at home and come here because uh, uh, during his PD engineering application, he was required to produce his grade sheet for bachelors, for masters, for everything. Oh, okay, okay. So the, that thing I I didn't need for PhD. I mean, I also left it at home. Yeah. yeah. So in PhD, mostly they, are, they uh, take your masters. So yeah. if you are applying for abroad, then you might bring it. But here I had already my masters on Tudel. PhD you don't need bachelors but PD is yeah, doing it. But it's 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 a good thing to have your bachelor yeah, grade true, sheet true, as well true, with true, yourself, true. you know. So don't just leave it, come with it. If it's required, great, then you have it. If it's not required, yeah, who cares, you know? So Thank you guys for watching this. In this video, we learned about the various things you need for an, uh, for your application process for PhD, PD engineering yeah. jobs. We discussed about visa sponsorship. We discussed about the things you need. We discussed about English as a requirement. And uh, we also discussed about the relevant websites where you can find such positions. So I hope you liked this video. If you really liked it, then make smash sure smash the thumbs up button. Then smash the thumbs up button and make sure to check out Sambit's channel. A lot of interesting things are available on his channel. You will really benefit from it. And again, do follow us on our social media handles. And uh, you will find it on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe to PyLearning uh, yeah, to don't. get more updates. And uh, if you want to learn more about programming, especially Python, uh, if you want to learn about the programming job, the world of programming jobs here in the Netherlands, about uh, coding interview questions, uh, bite-sized codes, uh, make sure to subscribe to PyLearning and join our Telegram group. Uh, you'll find the link in the description below. In the next video, we are going to talk about the common mistakes that people make during this application process. Yeah. That is a very important video, so don't miss it. However, don't skip this video as well because we are going to cover 
the topics that we actually built on this video mm -hmm. so i will see you in the next video the five important mistakes that people make usually during their job application process are like this number one mistake with their linkedin profile number two mistake in their resume number three mistake in their motivation letter number four mistake in finding the right job to apply for and number five which i think is the most important is building contacts during your stay here in the netherlands